Good evening. Happy Friday night. What would you do if you were just sitting at home and somebody pulled up and parked their truck right in your front yard? They just pulled up, they left their truck on your front lawn. What would your first instinct be? Before you answer, listen to what Dick Army thinks you would do. If I go park my truck on your, 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 your yard, you don't call the mayor, you call your lawyer. And you say, we'll settle this in the courts. Who calls their lawyer if somebody parks on their lawn? Seriously. Think about this. Somebody parks their truck on your yard, on your lawn. Maybe you'd call the police and ask them to get the truck towed away. No, Dick Army says if you're a normal red-blooded American, you'd call your lawyer and you'd say, hey, lawyer, there's a truck on my lawn. Let's figure out who owns that truck and see if we can sue them. In what universe would that be your first recourse, your first reaction? This is so strange. Dick Army brought this up as a means of explaining his objections to the government getting BP to set up a fund to pay the victims of the BP oil spill. This weird analogy is how he explained his frustration about that. If I go park my truck on your, your, your yard, you don't call the mayor, you call your lawyer. And you say, we'll settle this in the courts, uh, and so on. So the point that I have is, by what constitutional authority does the President of the United States say, I will decide what redress will be made to the victims of this catastrophe by this firm? And I will decide who are the victims and who are not the victims. That, the Constitution doesn't give that authority to the executive branch. So the government negotiates a great deal for the victims of the BP oil disaster. The government gets BP to hand over a ton of money to compensate the company's victims in this disaster. And conservatives, having never really minded the whole executive overreach thing under George W. Bush, conservatives with this deal decide they hate it. They just can't stand it, but they are having a very hard time articulating why they hate it exactly. Hence the bizarre truck on the lawn analogy. They can't exactly explain why, it just makes them feel bad. Now it's possible that this is just Obama derangement syndrome, that Obama did it and therefore it must be bad, that's possible. But maybe it's not just that, maybe it's something else. There are two sides to this deal after all. The government asked for this fund of money, it is BP who had to give up the money when they agreed to it. So it's also possible that it's not just Obama derangement syndrome, maybe these guys also feel bad for BP. Dick Army isn't exactly a stranger to the oil industry. The website Think Progress revealed last month that Dick Army's Freedom Works was part of BP's five-year plan to try to get protected waters off the coast of Florida opened to new offshore drilling. Dick Army's Freedom Works was try, uh, helping to try to make that happen for the oil industry. Conveniently, Freedom Works doesn't disclose their funders. So yes, maybe it's Obama derangement syndrome, but it also could be that these guys are like this with the oil industry, and they don't like to see oil companies have to pay even when an oil company causes the biggest environmental disaster in U.S. history. Take Joe Barton, for example, a Republican congressman from Texas who has turned out to be the man of the week in American politics as a result of this remarkable moment yesterday. I think it is a tragedy of the first proportion that a private corporation can be sub subjected to what I would characterize as a shakedown, in this case a $20 billion shakedown, I apologize. I do not want to live in a country where any time a citizen or a corporation does something that is legitimately wrong, is subject to some sort of political pressure that is again, in my words, amounts to a shakedown. So I apologize. That is the face of the Republican Party on the energy issue. He is the ranking House Republican on energy, Joe Barton, apologizing to the CEO of BP not once but twice, apologizing because the federal government got BP to set aside money for victims of their oil disaster. Joe Barton later retracted that apology and said he had been misconstrued. If anything I've said this morning has been misconstrued in an opposite effect, um, I want to, uh, to apologize for that uh, misconstruction. Congressman Barton has been in Congress since 1985. Before Joe Barton was elected to Congress, according to his own website, uh, he worked for the oil industry. He was a natural gas decontrol consultant for Atlantic Richfield Oil and Gas Company, better known as ARCO. ARCO, of course, is 
now part of BP. So conservatives and conservative politicians may just be predisposed to dislike what the president does because the president does it and they don't like this president. But they are also really tight with the oil industry. And on day 60 of the BP oil disaster, turns out that is a lot more politically important than it was 61 days ago. While everyone got very upset about Joe Barton's blunt expression of his pity for BP, how much he identifies with them against the interests of Americans who were harmed by what BP did, What's sort of being overlooked is that what Joe Barton expressed is a pretty mainstream conservative sentiment right now. I think uh, that Joe Barton, before he apologized, had a legitimate point. The president is directly engaged in extorting money from a company. This is like General Motors and Chrysler, where the administration basically stole money. Barton made a very courageous statement, in my judgment, to have anyone stand up and even indirectly defend them and say that they were a victim of a shakedown shows some political courage. Congressional Democrats said they wanted BP to set aside $20 billion. The government's in charge of this. I want to know who's going to get it. Who's going to get this money? Union activists? Acorn people? Who's going to get this money? This is an appointee from the Obama administration who will be, putting, who will be doing the payouts. Let's just make sure that this isn't a permanent ATM card. By what constitutional authority does the President of the United States say, I will decide what redress will be made to the victims of this catastrophe by this firm? And I will decide who are the victims and who are not the victims. That, the Constitution doesn't give that authority to the executive branch. Midterm election season starts right now. That reel of comments that we just played could essentially be the Democratic Party's campaign ad for November. Any Democratic candidate's campaign ad for 2010. The conservative movement and Republicans are lining up with BP and against the government trying to get BP to pay the victims of this disaster. Not metaphorically, it's not an extrapolation from what they're doing, it's directly what they're doing. And the remarkable news here is not that Republicans have this big political weakness or that they're accidentally showing it in this very blunt way. The really remarkable and frankly almost unbelievable development here is that Democrats appear to have noticed Democrats, for once in their lives, appear to be capitalizing on Republicans making this huge political error. New ads have already been cut by Michelle Bachman's Democratic opponent in Minnesota, Terrell Clark, and by the Democratic National Committee. It's BP's fault, and they should pay. But Michelle Bachman calls making BP pay for the cleanup extortion and said, If I was the head of BP, I would let the signal get out there we're not going to be chumps. If Bachman lets BP off the hook, guess who's paying? Us. I'm ashamed of what happened in the White House yesterday. I think it is a tragedy of the first proportion that a private corporation can be sub subjected to what I would characterize as a shakedown. But he personally wanted to apologize to Mr. Haywood, saying that he found it shameful what happened at the White House yesterday. But I apologize. And it's not just those Democratic ads. It's also Organizing for America, the outgrowth of Barack Obama's presidential campaign machine, blasting out this open letter yesterday called No Apologies, an attempt to essentially reactivate the Obama electorate around this issue. This is what it looks like when Democrats realize they've got a political opportunity. This is them seizing that opportunity. But to what end? Is this just pointing out that Republicans have taken a really toxic position on oil and energy? Is this just pointing this out and laughing at them and hoping to raise some money off of it? Or will Democrats try to turn this into concrete political gains, either electorally or in terms of policy? Well, check out this report from The Hill newspaper today. Senate liberals threaten rebellion on energy bill. Yes, that means their own energy bill. Senate liberals threatening to vote against the energy bill if it gets watered down, if putting a price on carbon gets taken out of the legislation. They're drawing a line in the sand and saying, if we're going to move on energy, we're going to do something important. No watering it down. Liberals, in other words, are saying that they have the political capital here on the issue of energy. Liberals have it. Conservatives have the opposite of political capital on this. And so progressives and Democrats should use it. Use it once. Use it for once. Use it to pass a no compromise bill. They're actually making that case right now. Pinch me.